Hey y'all, welcome back to our road less traveled, the Tundra edition. <laughs> and yes, it is April. <laughs> so we had a snafu with all the video that we had set up for this week's video. And <clears throat> so we had to redo it. We didn't have everything in line, so we apologize for having to do it at Camping World. But we're gonna go through the top eight-ish things that you have to have for um, to go camping and then a couple of bonus items that yeah. that'll work. All right, so surge protectors, you gotta have one for your rig because campground power is really not predictable, we could say. Uh, it's spiky in some places, so it's better to have one. What we use is the Power Watchdog. It's a 50 amp internal because I got tired of having to plug and unplug at the pedestal. Um, but they basically all do the same thing. Power Watchdog gives you Bluetooth capability to see your power utilization. It'll give you statistics on monthly usage if you do monthly stays. And that I know of, they're the only one that'll give you your first search protection module free if it burns up. So theirs is replaceable. The other is Progressive Industries and that's what we actually started with and you just plug and unplug it from the pedestal and then plug your 50 amp cord into it. They all come in 50 and 30 amp variants. All right, so for your sewer, what we did, and you don't have to spend a lot of money here because let's be honest, you're only trying to get bad stuff to a bad hole. So we went with the, the 20 foot kit. It has two 10 foot tubes. You can join them together. So if you get too far away from the septic tank, there are two additional things that you may want to add to this. This is perfectly adequate, but we like to add two additional things to it. And I'll show you in just a second. First thing is a clear elbow. Now, not because it has the flush valve, because really you're not gonna get enough water up there to back flush your black tank. Um, it's so that you can see when your black tank is running clear. It's really important. The other thing is, hold on. The other thing we like to use is, this goes into the septic system and it's two pieces. So that screws in but then you can see in the elbow that everything's going down and verify you don't have a blockage up up in your tube somewhere. You can actually watch and see everything going through. So there are a ton of different tank treatments. Um, we have used the TST and found it to be, you know, a pretty good product. Um, we like Unique. Um, we pretty much started using them from our second trip out and we've used them ever since. So other than maybe Matt's RV toilet digest or whatever he just came out with, we will stick with Unique. Um, but you, you have a whole host of things that you can choose from. But you need one. But you need one. This is definitely not brought to you by RV Safe Toilet Paper. This is the John Wayne of butt wipe. It won't take off anybody. This is awful, don't use it. I'd rather use a pine cone. This stuff is horrible. We use um, a aloe lined toilet paper that's nice and soft on the bum. And then we make sure we flush our black tank. But this stuff, Man, it's a rough going. This is what we use for our drinking water to go into the camper. The reason why is it's blue. And yes, I know some people, somebody's gonna say, well, it's only half inch, not five eighths. Well, it doesn't affect the water pressure that bad. So we use the blue one. And the reason why we use this isn't because it's zero G or everybody recommended. It's because it doesn't kink. So when you're rolling things up, it just doesn't knot all up. That versus this, 
these things constantly, when, when they get cold, they get firm, you can't wrap them up, they don't want to stay in shape. So we do not use this. I do use one of these to come out of the water spigot into the water filter. And the reason why is it's short and I don't put disconnects on this, but it, typically it seals up really nice to the, to the faucet. Then everything feeding the rig is the zero G. One of the other things that we've done is I've gone to an inline pressure regulator instead of the one that's got the uh, meter built into it. Um, I kept leaving those places, so we just go with this now and I haven't had a problem. This is the adjustable water regulator versus the inline. You know, you're talking 20 to $40, $9. So if I'm gonna leave nine bucks somewhere, I'd rather it be that. This is great um, and it lets you fine tune. But honestly, I don't think we've been in a campground there. The water pressure was over 40 PSI anyway. So we just go with this. All right. So water filters, we use clear 2 And the reason why is the front side is the dirt guard and it filters down to 20 microns, but you can get one that does 10 micron as a refill. Then the second one goes into the bottom of that. It does a one micron filtration. We've used this since the beginning. Our water is clean. Now in Tennessee, you have to replace this a little bit quicker because they get really dirty, but you can back flush it to extend the life on it. This you have to throw away and replace every 30 to 60 days. All right, so these are wheel chocks, which if you have a travel trailer, you really need these because when you come disconnected off the ball, your trailer can roll away from you. The problem is, is that these are plastic. So if you put too much weight on them, they'll actually bust. I don't like anything plastic. So no plastic, this, and no plastic, those. Here's another example. Um, again, these are plastic that go between the wheels as a chalk. The problem is with these, if you don't have that much width in between your tires, those won't fit. So I don't like those. What we like are these guys here. These go between the wheels. They have a, a bolt on them and you just expand them out to, to stop the tires. This is also known as an X-Jack. That's the manufacturer name. This is a clone. All right, so leveling blocks. Big fan of them, especially if you have a travel trailer. Um, not a big, necessarily a, a big fan of this brand. I prefer the Anderson blocks um, for a fifth wheel because it creates an arch that you can roll up onto, whereas these you may not be able to get enough in between the tires. All right, so if you've got a travel trailer or a fifth wheel that your jacks are manual, this little socket that goes on the end of um, your power drill makes bringing those up and down a lot quicker. Highly recommend that. One of the other things that we do is I put in copper elbows for our flush tank or our, yeah, our black flush tank and our fresh water so that there's not as much pressure going into the Nautilus system. This screws in and the hose goes right up into that. All right, the other thing I like, these are just regular old fisherman's gloves. Um, they, they fit snug enough and they're textured to where if your hands get wet, you can get things disconnected when you're dealing with the black tank. Um, so I like those.
that wraps up this week's video on eight essential items you need before you can take your camper out for the first time. And we'll see you next week on our road less traveled. I'm gonna hitchhike. <laughs> we we might see if we don't lose y'all after this video. Yeah. <laughs>